Thanks very much. Well, Labor's economic statement is really a statement of a billion dollars worth of cruelty inflicted on asylum seekers with the PNG proposition to be paid for by some of the world's poorest people with a billion dollars coming out of the aid budget and the efficiency dividend on the public service. Let nobody suggest that this is in any way socially just or any way contributes to the transition in Australia out of the old resource-based economy into the new uh, service and information and entrepreneurial economy. If the government was serious, it would have reversed the cuts to universities. It would have restored funding to single parents. It would have found the money to lift the New Start allowance by $50 a week. But it didn't do that. It preferred cruelty and cowardice. I say cruelty because we're spending a billion dollars to be cruel to people in PNG. We are taking the money, the extra money that is being given to the PNG government out of the aid budget, so that will deny other countries that money, other countries in the region. We've just had the Marshall Islands here talking about impacts of climate change in the Pacific and all our Pacific neighbours from Kiribati, uh, all of them talking about the impacts on climate change. We're taking that money out of the aid budget and at the same time we're deferring our commitment to 0.5 gross national income and we're pushing it out by another year. That is the third time Australia has done that. So on the back of the world's poorest, we're inflicting cruelty on even more people and it's cowardice because the government has not fixed the mining tax. Once again, the statement shows that they've had to scale down yet again what they expect to get from the mining tax, not because of commodity price reductions, but because they have failed to fix the flaws, the structural flaws in the mining tax. They haven't touched the fossil fuel subsidies, but instead they have gone for the old scapegoat of the public service. This is Kevin Rudd just taking over yet another of Tony Abbott's policies. Tony Abbott came out and said he'd slashed the public service by at least 12,000, if not more. And here is Kevin Rudd saying, oh, well, let's impose a further efficiency dividend. And that is code for jobs lost and services slashed to the Australian community. Why? Because they didn't have the courage to take on the people who can pay and instead pursued a cruel policy that is going to cost us not only financially, but it's going to cost us in our reputational terms globally, just as we step up to presidency of the G20, just as we step up into the UN Security Council, Australia says, rich country that we are, we are not going to honour our commitments on the aid budget, we're going to push it back another year. That really doesn't position us well in a global context. But, um just on the PNG, so $420 million and is now going there. That doubles the aid, aid budget. $18 million will go to law and order. Surely this is something that you would support? If the Australian government is going to bribe PNG, and that's exactly what they have done for a developing country as our neighbour, then they should have found that money additional outside the aid budget because all we are already the third largest recipient of our own aid budget because we take the money that runs detention centres out of our aid budget. What they're doing is virtually committing all of our aid budget to bribing Papua New Guinea and running detention centres and taking it away from other countries in the region and around the world who expect to benefit and to get money from our aid budget. And then furthermore, we're scaling back the increase in the aid budget, the 0.5 by pushing it out by another year. Now, what's the rest of the world going to think of us stepping up to the presidency of the G20 saying we're a rich country but we're not going to meet our obligations to the poor? Why? Because we think Rio Tinto and BHP should not pay more mining tax. Well, I don't think that is what a sensible and just country would do. Furthermore, forget all the talk of the transition in the economy. You're not going to transition this economy unless you get behind universities, research and development, education spending. 
and slashing university funding is the wrong way to go and indeed then failing to address the single parent cuts and the, the poverty in Australia is again just stark contrast. We've got a lot of talk but the action says protect the rich, particularly the mega rich mining companies and take it away from the poor. Just on the aid spending, the increase in that has been shifted back to the last year of the forward estimates. Given the write downs, do you think Labor will actually deliver the increase? I don't think anyone could have any confidence that either Labor or the Coalition are going to meet their commitments on foreign aid. And this is going to break the hearts of a lot of people. I spoke to a rally in Canberra earlier this year of young people from one end of the country to the other. And they came to Canberra to say that the heart and spirit of Australia is not only a good life for all of us here, but doing our best to help people get out of poverty around the world. Young people across the country are going to be horrified by pushing out our commitment on foreign aid, by slashing the aid budget in the way that the government is doing and denying other countries and spending all this money on cruelty. I think that on top of their uni cuts uh, and on top of their failure to address uh, New Start and, and youth allowance and, and single parents is just going to say to Australians, look, Tony Abbott and Kevin Rudd have moved so far to the right, all they can see is the rich and advantaged and the old vested interests of the old economy, the resource-based economy, they cannot see the bright renewable energy future. And what, what is extraordinary too is 15 minutes after this financial statement was made, up on the website came the report of the Australian energy market operator saying Australia can achieve 100 per cent renewable energy by 2030 and it's technically feasible to do so. If you were serious about transformation in the economy, if you were serious about climate change, you'd have had that up in lights. But instead of that, they tried to bury it on the back of this announcement because they simply don't want to see that kind of transformation. Just onto the bank levy, would you scrap that levy? Well, the Greens have said we want to improve the bank levy. We came out and announced the bank levy as one way of raising money uh, in the, what is effectively a revenue crisis. We've said it should apply to the big banks only and not the small banks, and we still think that should be the case, and we think it should be much higher than what the government has proposed. The bank levy we had in place would have raised some $8 billion over the Ford estimates. The government's is only in the vicinity of $700 million or so. The fact of the matter is the four big banks in Australia and the global subsidiaries of those mega banks make massive profits and the reason they're doing that is that they can borrow money cheaper on the wholesale market because the Australian community has got behind the big banks and guaranteed their, their funding. Whereas the smaller banks, the credit unions, they don't have that advantage so they are in a less competitive position. What we think is it's time to get a more level playing field to give the smaller banks and the credit unions a fair playing field with the big banks and we'll work with the government of whatever persuasion to make a bank levy a reality but to make it fairer. And bear in mind this is something that the International Monetary Fund, that the European Union this have, have recommended should happen but let's do it in a way that levels the playing field and doesn't keep the small banks and credit unions at a disadvantage with the big four. The unemployment rate is set to go up to 6.25 per cent and growth is set to slow. What would this mean for Tasmania considering we already have the highest unemployment rate in the country? Well one of the key things in the economic statement is the uh, 3.8 billion dollar cost of uh, moving to emissions trading a year earlier and making it cheaper for the big polluters to pollute. That is a saving the Greens could offer straight away. Don't do it. Don't go to emissions trading, flexible pricing one year earlier and save $3.8 billion because in Tasmania that money coming into the hydro from the fixed price is actually a major contribution to the Tasmanian economy. It's one of the major ways that the state government raises money and it would be crazy in this context to lose those competitive opportunities and that money coming into Tasmania. We've seen Labor outline what they say are some pretty big revenue write-downs due to the global circumstances. 
you're announcing a lot of policies that you say are costed. Would this make them unaffordable? Uh, no, the Greens are going to go to the election with a fully costed policy platform and we will be of course looking at the latest uh, Treasury figures in relation to that. But we've come out very clearly and said hard decisions have to be made. It was the Greens who said first that we should abandon this surplus fetish and recognise that it's costing jobs across Australia. And that was last year. The government and the coalition hung on to that idea well beyond its use-by date and had to give it up. Now they are, you know, we said there was a revenue crisis. We had to raise money, and the government and the coalition ignored it completely. Refused to talk about how to fix the mining tax, how much money we could get from fossil fuel subsidies, what we could do with a bank levy. Refused to do that, and finally, they've now conceded today that there is a revenue crisis that we do have to raise money. Where they haven't got to is to address their own cowardice about taking on the big mining industry. And the reason they won't do that is because the miners ran a major uh, campaign against the government back in 2010. And Kevin Rudd was so damaged and so frightened by what the mining industry dished up that they are basically now insulated from any cuts. And the people who are going to pay are the public servants, the services that Australians have, but more particularly, the poorest in the world are going to pay for the cruelty of what's being dished out today, and that's wrong. When would there be a surplus under the Greens policies? Well, the Greens are saying that the, we should return to a surplus over the economic cycle, but you have to keep in mind what, that, that, again, the austerity measures that have been put in place in Europe have been shown in many cases not to slow down economic activity and to undermine the potential for recovery and growth and new industries. And that's what you have to balance out here. And the Greens think we should be spending money on the kind of nation-building infrastructure that will create the jobs and industries of the future. And that's why we're saying we should be spending money on things like universities, on things like uh, investing in more research and development. Agriculture is crying out for it. We also need to be looking at the national infrastructure in terms of transport infrastructure and the like. They're the kinds of nation-building spends that we need to be thinking about in the overall economic cycle. Thank you very much. Thank you.